Today, we're going down to Texas. We're gonna take our thermals and we're hunting hogs. I, I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight, I'm feeling mean. Gonna make an ugly scene. Highly addictive way to hunt. You're up all night, you sleep during the day, you're the ultimate predator. It's gotten to where I don't shoot them all the time because I wait until I run out of meat before I shoot them. Texas style. There goes some white tail. There's a lot of white tail here. My buddy Ben Bishop over there at Sig Sauer said, hey Dan, let's go down to Texas, so I didn't hesitate. We went down to test out the new Sig Echo 3s. I've never uh, used a thermal. They're illegal here in Wyoming. You know, I went down there just kind of not sure what type of hunt I was going to get into. I brought my bow. I didn't know, you know, what kind of action I was going to have, if I could do some spot and stalking or not. It's like five o'clock after it gets dark. I have my Savage AR-10 back there with the thermal. We had basically two tactics that we used and we would sit in basically these box stands and just wait. Now it's really thick down there so the boys would go out there with their side-by-sides and sprinkle corn out and that's a very common tactic down there. Sprinkle some corn on the roads uh, right before dark and get those pigs drawn out of the brush and kind of locked in on the road so you can let them have it. All right, we're sitting on the thermal scope here. Just watching the Sendero. It's like 6.45 and it's pitch black. So we just have a long sit. because like yeah, you're doing all this at night and you don't get to do this anywhere else in the world like this. And at night on hogs, you have the advantage. Let me tell you what, if you had the hog problem we have, you'd be doing <laughs> We'd be thing. making too plus, you know, Plus the table fare, a hog is- Absolutely. You know, in some respects, you know, you go up there and I've eaten whitetail out of Montana in the alfalfa fields. And to me, that was the sweetest meat you could eat, you know? Then you come down here and you start shooting the hogs and the meat, everybody says they're hogs, they don't, they don't taste, but it's just a delicious fare. It's, to me, it's more entertaining than the whitetail. I would rather eat a hog than a whitetail. Yeah. You're cooking it right, you're doing it right, and it's delicious, so. Yeah, these are fat hogs. These right. are the biggest hogs I've ever killed. Really? Yeah. 150 to 180 pound types. Yeah. I mean, it's a big pig. I mean, these are the fattest I've ever killed compared to anywhere else and, wow. and bigger. I mean, hey, they get to eat here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They know how to eat. That's for sure. The feral hog is an exotic invasive species that is wreaking havoc on the native ecosystems of Texas. Texas is home to more hogs than any other state. We did a little bit of sitting. And I can only sit for so long. You start dozing off, you know, before you know it, it's 11.30 and one o'clock and you're getting tired. Coming in for some coffee, middle of the night here. We're gonna head out again here pretty soon. Hunting all night, sleep during the day. So it's kind of hard to get used to. It takes a few days to really get used to that program, so.
coffee bags, not too shabby. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the difference between this and just brew coffee, drip coffee. We did a little bit of sitting and we did a little bit of walking. And this is where it's really fun for me. It, you know, we would sit till nine o'clock at night and then come back for supper. And then, you know, maybe some guys would go take a nap for a couple hours and then go back out. But I went right back out. So the boys would take me back out on these road stretches and just drop me off. All right, we're about ready with our thermal and our suppressor. We have like a three quarter moon and visibility is pretty good. I mean, just with the naked eye, but I should be able to glass a little bit too. So we're just gonna go really slow and walk down the Sendero and make a big loop through here. Thermals and suppressors, holy smokes, I never thought I'd see the day that I'd do this. I would just throw on the backpack and just slink around and I would turn on the thermal and I'm just walking down Sendero, so just walking down the roads. Another little trick with this of what I did down there is I would just take this thing off. So it, it's a very simple attachment system. You can mark where you're at on the rail and you can just pull this off of your rifle and when you're going out there, I mean, you can just point this around so you don't have to swing your rifle around with it attached. You can just point this around and scan. And that's mostly what we were doing down there. And then with how this is set up, you just throw it back on here. And, you know, I'm not advocating saying that you're going to go shoot a, a sub MOA group at 100 with this thing by just taking it off and putting it back on. But it's going to be really close. And when your shots are within 70 yards, I didn't hesitate once with just taking this off, using it as you know an optic and a monocular, using it like this, and then throwing it right back on the gun and laying down and shooting a pig. I didn't think about it twice. I didn't have any issues. Close quarter combat, I like to say, you're, you're not gonna be that far off where it's gonna cause an accuracy issue. One thing with hunting out here, is you're relying on your ears a lot more. You're listening, you're trying to pick up movement. You just kind of use your senses a little bit differently. Taking your time, checking around corners, scanning with that Echo 3. That's pretty cool too, because you can see through the brush. So you can see pigs or any animal for that matter through the brush that you couldn't normally see even in daylight. It was really hard to tell your depth perception. When you're looking through a thermal, it's so difficult to actually see how far away they were. And so I would like, it, it was kind of funny actually, because I'm, I'm watching my thermal and I'm sneaking down there and you know, I'd see a rabbit on the road too. And I was like, okay, the rabbit's right here and that pig's about double the distance maybe. Ah, he's gotta be about 75 yards. And so I walked like 10 yards and this rabbit like, scampers off and turns out the rabbit's like right here so i'm like holy smokes this pig has to be like 40 yards away
So hunting in Texas, it's a little bit different down there. So I came down there with an open mind and I wanted to do it the Texas way. And so basically what they have going down there is a, a hunt club or like a lease that they have. Their job is to keep the hogs thinned out on these properties. And they say down there that you got to kill 60% of your population every year if you want to keep the population steady so it's not growing. And so that's a lot of pigs. And when there's that many pigs down there, uh, you got a lot of work to do. I'll tell you that right now. So this is the Savage MSR-10. Uh, it, it's a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a platform that, uh, that Savage makes a few different calibers that you can get this in. But it, it's a heavy duty, uh, hard hitting platform. So I do prefer uh, a little heavier round like that, like a Creedmoor over a 223, just because you just you have that knockdown power for those bigger pigs. And the last thing you want to do is run into one of those 175 pound plusers and shoot it with a 223 and get away from you. Now, these are a really compact thermal. You can see how small this thing is. And it, it does everything for a consumer thermal that's affordable. This is the one to six. Uh, you can pick it up online for 3,000 bucks, which might seem really expensive, but most of these thermals that are of any quality are gonna be $6,000 or more. Uh, so for what this thermal can do, it's a heck of a deal, it really is. And this was my first time using a thermal. Ready? Let me go back to the menu. I'm on the reticle. I'm gonna go down. I'm just going through the reticles. I like that small reticle right there. So let's just leave it right there for zeroing purposes. If you can see where I hit in reference to the, the foot warmer that's stuck to the target, that'll help. You're on the bottom left corner of the hand warmer. I'm gonna hit it one more time. Okay. Now you're at six o'clock on the bottom of the hand warmer. First off, what's new on the Echo 3 is it has a 320 by 240 core. Um, so that's considerably better. The display is a 400 by 400. It has a lot more resolution, uh, much better image that you're seeing. The 14 gigabyte memory on board, that is gonna give you a lot of options for either taking pictures or recording. It has recoil activated recordings, or you can go into manual mode and just hit record, and you can record for 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, or even uh, until the whole hard drive's full. Many different color palettes, if you want black hot, white hot, red hot, um, a lot of different options there. I think there's eight total. The new Echo 3 has a 10 degree field of view, whereas the original one was a four degree field of view, so you're seeing a lot more of your environment out there. There's the reticle mode. There's many different types of reticles, sizes of reticles, dot, circle dot, no dot, which is crosshairs, crosshairs with a dot in the middle. The zero feature, if I have uh, two bullet holes that are low and to the right, you can just move the reticle that's on here down and over and reset it. It's a very easy thermal to zero. Feral hogs' high reproductive rate lack of natural predators and generalist approach to habitat and diet has allowed them to successfully spread. If left unchecked, a feral hog population can triple in just one year. A lot of shooting hogs around here. I've hunted a lot of different places for pigs and this is different than anything I've ever experienced. Yes. It's a different style. Getting ready to head out, a little bit different. It's like, it's midnight and we're gonna go walk the road and see what we can find with our thermals. Night Ops, here we go.
I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling I wanted mean. to, you know, lay down and get a good solid rest uh, on my swagger there and get good footage, have nice rock solid footage. So I lay down and, you know, those pigs are out there munching away. As long as you got the wind, they're not looking around too much. You know, they'll hear you if you're making noise. That's why you got to go slow, but lay her down and, and let them have it. Tonight I'm gonna pick myself a fight. In some deserving dirt bag. We're gonna cook some bacon in our bacon. That's when you know you're doing things right, when you're cooking bacon in bacon. Well, thanks for having us here. We enjoyed it. We man. enjoyed your company. Yeah, it was and awesome. your intensity, it was good. Oh yeah, yeah it you know. gets me all wound up. Like I said, <laughs> it's in a whole different way. And that's part of Beyond the Grid, what we like to do. Yeah. Experience new cultures, experience new ways to hunt. I'm gonna come down to Texas and do it the Texas way. 